Hello again everyone and welcome to my next video. In the last episode I explained that get coercion is prohibited by the Torah in most cases and when coercion is used unlawfully the results are an invalid get which renders a wife a still married to her husband. Any remarriage with such a get would violate one of the most serious sins in the Torah known as Ashes Ish which means adultery and any children born from a new marriage would be Mamzerim. To illustrate to you the seriousness of the sin of Eshet Ish, the Torah has mandated that a Jew must give up his life instead of violating the three cardinal sins of idol worship, adultery, and murder. This means that if someone would threaten your life if, say, you didn't eat pork or violate the Shabbos, for example, then the halacha is that you eat the pork or violate the Shabbos to save your life. But if someone threatens your life if you don't have relations with a married woman, then the halacha dictates that you must give up your life instead of violating this cardinal sin. I have also discussed in the last video linked below that our sages known as Chazal stated that whoever is not an expert in the laws of Jewish marriage and divorce should not be involved with these laws as the slightest error can lead to great sins as we have already discussed. In the 21st century we have seen a great breach of the Torah conducted by many rabbis involved with divorce in that they coerce men into giving gittin against the halacha. To better understand these halachas, I refer you to my previous videos and the accompanying documents which you can find in the description box below. Now before I get into the subject of this video, I need to make a disclaimer that the statements that you're about to hear, which are in regards to a gang of rabbinic thugs, are not only permitted by the Torah, but are also an obligation. See the description box linked below, which contains Talmudic and rabbinic sources that obligates us to reveal the Torah violations of rabbis who feign pity while committing gross violations of halacha, which desecrates the name of Hashem. And for any newcomer to my channel who recoils at the thought of rabbis being chastised, I have already delineated in my previous videos the severe halachic violations that some rabbis are committing where you can read the cited sources that mandate reporting such violators of the Torah. Some might look very holy with those long beards, but don't be surprised when in the end they turn out to be crooks. The biblical Korach, who looked very saintly and even possessed Ruach HaKodesh, turned out to be such a villain. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button so I can continue to share with you these important insights. One of the worst rabbinic offenders of our times is the gangster rabbi known as Mendel Epstein who is currently sitting in prison after getting caught by the FBI in 2013 in a sting operation that put an end to his long career of forcing Jewish divorces. This character has shown himself to be not truly behaving as an authentic rabbi since a real rabbi is supposed to uphold the Torah and conduct his daily affairs with utmost truth, honesty, and integrity. Mendel Epstein has disgraced not only himself, but also the entire rabbinate and even all of Judaism itself. He has also created a tremendous Chil Hashem in that some Gentiles extrapolate from this episode that Jews allow violence to mete out justice. He was even coined the prod father by the media on account of his trademark use of a cattle prod to torture his victims into giving a Jewish divorce document known as a get. I will link below an article containing audio recordings from the FBI how he was caught boasting to undercover agents how he subdues his victims without leaving a mark on their body as evidence. Epstein committed the absolute, the absolute worst form of get coercion beating and torturing people, which all authorities agree is not allowed. And yet the rabbis have remained silent for nearly 30 years while all of this was going on. There were some letters written against his practices, but not enough was done to stop this criminal until the FBI put an end to his career. So what do we learn from the Mendel Epstein saga? Number one, he engaged in his very profitable get business for nearly 30 years with the assistance of others such as Ora, the RCA Bezdin, Aryeh Ralbag, the Rabbanut in Israel, 
Yaakov J. Goldstein, Martin Walmark, the Jewish press, and countless others who remained silent while he perpetrated his heinous acts. Number two, he did not operate a bezin which followed halacha, but instead he followed the money, which was anywhere from seventy to a hundred thousand dollars per hit. Number three, he did not care to do his due diligence in ascertaining accurate information about the supposed husband that he was commissioned to kidnap. This is evidenced by court records which indicated that Mendel Epstein had convened his mock-up bezin after receiving payment of $70,000 in order to issue a ruling that this husband meets the Torah criteria of kidnap and torture in extracting a get. The only problem was that this supposed husband was a non-existent, non-Jewish, undercover FBI agent. How is that for doing his due diligence? Number four, court records linked below also show that the Besden of America was complicit in issuing a fake seruv prepared by Shlomo Weissman from the RCA and signed by Gedalia Schwartz along with communications with Aura. So the Besden of America seems to hold the same standards as Mendel Epstein, which are forget the truth and forget halacha, just follow the money. And after his arrest, Aura, in a predictable act of covering the tracks, tried to conceal their connection to Epstein by issuing a statement to the effect that they have no affiliations with him, which is, of course, a bold-faced lie. <clears throat> Number five, along with Epstein, others were arrested, among them Mordechai Martin Walmark, the Rosh Hashiva of Shara Torah and Munsi, Yaakov J. Goldstein, Mendel's trusted cipher for the past 25 years, Shalom Shuchot, a Chabad rabbi from Crown Heights, and Musselman thugs in training, Benjamin Stimler, Ariel Potash, David Hellman, Simcha Bulmash, Jay Goldstein's two sons, Avram and Moshe, and Mendel Epstein's son, David. And number six, the ironic part of all this is the fact that Arya Ralbag, who for years was the go-between to give testimony to the Israeli rabbinate that a kosher get was delivered, now became a turncoat and committed the sin of Messira by acting as a state witness to lock up the above defendants in order to save himself. This only goes to show you that a mobster will always be a mobster. Now, after Mendel Epstein was arrested, you would think that the rabbis would speak out harshly against such practices, but again, you would be wrong. Instead, they deceptively diverted attention in, in another direction. I refer you to my previous video where Moshe Tender was quoted by a newspaper after Mendel Epstein's arrest that the latter is getting are not kosher. So this begs the question, why was Moshe Tender and all the other rabbis who were aware of his defective getting silent all along? This seems to indicate that they were silently supporting him until he was caught. To illustrate this point, in a radio program linked below, which was broadcast by David Lichtenstein after the arrest of the gang members, the host invited Rabbi David Cohen to his show to discuss the situation. But instead of the panel addressing the poor women who were misled by Epstein to receive faulty gitten and how to get them a kosher get, he endeavored to ask Rabbi Cohen the question of what can we do now to prevent agunas in the world now that the prominent rabbi Mendel Epstein was taken out. Not a word about the poor male victims, some of whom were left maimed, scarred, and traumatized for life. Lichtenstein was saying, in effect, that we lost a great system in dealing with the Aguna problem, and now we have to be creative in finding new ways to deal with this problem. My message to David Lichtenstein and to all the others who claim that there is an Aguna problem is stop supporting these women who violate halacha by going to civil courts, stop supporting mothers who alienate their children from their fathers, and rather set up bezins that follow strict halacha in matters of divorce. After that, I guarantee you, you won't have agunas anymore. I've always stated in my previous videos that most women who have been given the title of aguna do not actually meet the Torah's definition of an aguna. But the corrupt rabbis and aura have hijacked this term to elicit sympathy from the public and help them commit their halacha crimes in an effort to enrich themselves or pander to their constituents. 
Now, while all of this is truly disgraceful, there is also another kind of Chilul Hashem which pertains to the Jewish community as a whole. That occurs when someone blatantly violates the Torah while others sit silently by and do nothing about it, with still others who even support such actions. The Torah, Hashem's prized possession, is being denigrated while no one is standing up to defend it. Mendel Epstein is known to have perpetrated his kidnapping and torture schemes going all the way back to the mid-1980s, having had procured scores of invalid gittin during this time. Who knows exactly how many women remarried with such faulty gittin and how many mamzerim were born from this. So part of the reason why I started this channel is because I was thoroughly disgusted to see how such blatant occurrences of ancient East were happening on a regular basis while rabbis and community leaders remained silent of these sins. I have stated in previous videos that in Judaism, remaining silent is tantamount to committing the sin itself as the Torah states that the Jewish nation is considered one large body and we are all connected, like it or not. That is the concept of kol yisrael arevim zelazeh. Whomever has the ability to protest and does not becomes culpable for the sin. We see also in this week's Parsha of Chukas that Aaron was punished along with his brother Moshe because of the latter's action of hitting the rock, which was against Hashem's wishes. This happened either because Aaron didn't stop Moshe or because he himself also did not speak to the rock. So that teaches the importance of speaking up. Therefore, by producing these videos, I have now done my part to make you all aware of what is going on in our corrupted Beddin. Now, all we need to do is wake up from our spiritual slumber and demand that this corrupt system be overhauled. In a previous video titled, Will COVID-19 Hit the Reset Button on Rabbinic Corruption? I said that the Gemara states in Masechet Shabbos, Daf 139a, Rabbi Yossi ben Elisha says that if you see calamities, calamities coming to the world, then go and examine your judges, as any calamity that comes to the world comes due to the judges of Israel acting corruptively. In other words, the Gemara there is telling us to examine these judges with the ultimate goal of draining the rabbinic swamp. I have stated that none of you have ever heard your rabbi bring up this Gemara at one of his sermons, because no rabbi likes to be pointing a finger at himself. So now that we are living in days full of social, medical, and financial upheavals, there's no one other than myself who has brought up this Gemara to try to put all of this suffering in context. Do you think Hashem would sit idly by while these corrupt rabbis give a stamp of approval to the sin of Eshet Ish? And that sin is just one of many in a large package of sins that are committed in the get process. Every time there's any form of coercion, multiple grave sins such as Eshet Ish, Mamzerim, public shaming, stealing monies, Lashon Hara, Motzi Shemra, Megalaponim Batora Shalok Halacha, etc., etc., are being committed with not a peep coming from anyone of authority. So I ask again, where are our leaders? And along with all the rabbinic perpetrators, there are also countless others that act as accessories to the sin as they assist or support the coercion of a get. Mendel Epstein is just one of many rabbinic gangsters who use anti-Torah tactics to enrich themselves and issue faulty gittin in the process. The women out there who have utilized Epstein's services need to be sought out, identified, and informed that their gittin are all invalid and will need to receive a new kosher get. Why have you never heard of any rabbi that is willing to spearhead such a campaign? I think you may know the answer by now. Our fake and phony leaders instead busy themselves in talking about matters that are far less important from the halachic perspective in an effort to cover up the cardinal sins that are happening in our time about which the Torah says Yaharog ve'al yavor. For an example of this, see the link below where you will read about some prominent rabbis who wrongly issued an annulment to a woman who should have really received a get. And then these rabbis subsequently received a ruling from Rabbi David Feinstein that they erred in issuing an annulment and they supposedly accepted his ruling. 
and yet I've refused to take the next bold step and instruct this woman to immediately divorce her new husband since their marriage was adulterous all along. So these rabbis remain silent while multiple sins of Eshet Ish are accumulating on a daily basis. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos where I will be exposing more of these rabbinic frauds. Thanks again for watching and see you all in the next video.